Hello everybody, there is an AMA by Dermont, who is a developer on the Assassin's Creed Odyssey video game, and today we are going over the most important questions that we find throughout the interview, and we are talking about them and giving our thoughts. He ends this answer by saying her actions and choices will lead to different endings, true for other quests too. This goes back to what we were talking about in the original E3 coverage, that there are multiple endings to the game based on RPG dialogue choices and actions. As we also stated previously, we don't really think this is part of Assassin's Creed because dialogue usually was strictly written as it was, and the fact that it can be different from player to player is kind of awkward, and different endings might lead to controversy, controversy through the community on what's actually canon or not, but we're going to have to wait for the novel to actually decide. Like the question says, this Call to Arms perk references the thing you can do in Assassin's Creed Brotherhood, number three, Revelations, and I personally like this. I wanted this to be in Assassin's Creed Origins when installing the Brotherhood of Egypt into Egypt, but it wasn't. Now, they do it with soldiers, unlike Assassins, but it's the next best thing, and I think it's pretty cool that, um, that it's coming back. As stated in the E3 review the other day, we talked about the novel having Cassandra as the main lead. This question confirms that Cassandra is the main character throughout the Assassin's Creed Odyssey video game, and despite that, he still says that there is no right or wrong way. Personally, I have to play as Cassandra now. Being a lower head like myself, it will just feel wrong to play as Alexios and do all the decisions that Alexios would do, knowing that Cassandra is supposed to be the main character. This question relates to the idea, coming back to Assassin's Creed Syndicate, where there are two different characters, and they have two different, semi-different ability trees. But in Assassin's Creed Odyssey, Alexios and Cassandra are essentially the same character. They have the same dialogue, like stated in the E3 coverage video, they have the same actions, same skill trees, so it's the only thing different is male or female, and yeah, exactly, nothing different about them. The rumor in the E3 coverage also stated that modern day would be optional, as per the lady from E3 that was Ubisoft. This uh, question also states that that is false, that modern day is not optional, everyone will experience modern day, and they're actually choices made in modern day compared to the choices you made in the past. So depending on what you did in the past, you will have different choices in the future. Again, that goes back to the whole dumb RPG element that I feel is very unnecessary and very shoehorny just to copy from The Witcher and Bioware games. This question and answer reveals that the game will actually have a reversible cover and Cassandra will be on the inside. Probably going to be about the same thing, Cassandra standing in front of a few soldiers, as seen on the Alexios cover, and it'll probably change if you get the Gold Edition, Medusa Edition, whichever edition you get. Again, shoehorned in Alexios, and promotion, promotion of Alexios is far superior than promotion of Cassandra, when in reality Cassandra is canon. So Ubisoft is really making a weird decision on putting Alexios on the front cover instead of Cassandra, and then making Alexios reversible. This question asks whether the Assassin's Creed lore will be present throughout these, this video game, and he basically answered that this game is the fight for free will. As mentioned previously, Darius, the Assassin, has already been around at this time for about 30 years. How will they fit him into the lore? Well, probably by saying that he was a fighter of free will, and that the person he killed, Darius, obviously killed Xerxes I, was a backer of the Templars. This question and answer states that there will be no more shields, just like in Assassin's Creed Origins. Um, only enemies will have shields, obviously, as seen in gameplay. And the shield combat will be replaced with more parrying and dodging techniques, similar to something from Assassin's Creed Origins and Assassin's Creed Unity mixed together. 
there will be more pieces of Eden in the game, which I think is a fantastic inclusion, considering this will explore your lineage as a member of First Civilization blood. So not only will the Spear of Leonidas make an appearance, maybe something like the Apple or Sword. Something that was also rumored before by Serratos on Twitter was that the anti kethero mechanism will be featured in this game. It is an ancient Greek artifact theorized to be a clock, but in Assassin's Creed history it is confirmed to be an artifact of easy origin used to use the numbers, aka the calculations, to look into the future. In this game, it is stated that the only thing that will change about your outfit is what you find in the world, and with what you find in the world, your hood will actually change color. Personally, having only customizable armor through mix matching is kind of is less assassin y, I guess you could say, with robes and such. So I just hope um, the hoods look good, I guess I could say. Something I found weird in the E3 gameplay demo was all the super Spartan kicks and super duper flip ship shield flips and whatnot. Apparently, you can uh, go and ignore all that by using certain perks. I think that is very good for realism and playthroughs of realism. Tomb puzzles are back, just like in Assassin's Creed 2, which is kind of funny because you'd think there'd be tomb puzzles in Assassin's Creed Origins, which there kind of was, but not really. So, it's kind of good that they're back. It is confirmed that parkour is back, and in the E3 coverage video we also covered that Parkour is available throughout the cities where you could not touch the ground. That's how big and expansive they are. Hopefully that is true, but this is a confirmation, at least a little sliver, that parkour is returning. This is good news. Half of the map is the ocean, and half of the map is land. Unlike in Assassin's Creed Origins, where the whole map was land, and you can only experience half of it because the other half was complete barren desert. So in this half of the map, the sea half, you'll at least be able to sail around, fight the storms of the Greek landscapes, and even fight enemy ships. In Assassin's Creed Origins, there was reference to Darius the Assassin and how he assassinated Xerxes I in Persia. You were given his hidden blade. That was a reference to Assassin's Creed lore established in Assassin's Creed II. This question, I'm assuming, is making that same question. Will there be references to other Assassin's Creed lore? And he says yes, but he won't spoil anything. I think this is very exciting considering how much of Cain and Abel we don't know about and how Cain killed Abel and that was the first murder because they were fighting over a piece of Eden. That could be greatly explored and I'm very excited to see what they go with that. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoyed this video and stay tuned for the future.